Your angels are speaking to you. Do you hear them? Welcome to The Calling of Light with author and empathic spiritual tarot reader Anne Marie O'Dell. The Calling of Light offers direct empathic insight and relatable spiritual topics, interviews with special spiritual guests, and straight talk call in readings. Kick back and enjoy free form spirit tea with Anne Marie, the way you like it best when you want to simplify. Here is your host, Anne Marie O'Dell. Welcome to the Calling of Light. My name is Anne Marie O'Dell and I am a Master Tarot Advisor, Spiritual Teacher, and Author. I advise for two leading psychic lines since 2001, with thousands of client reviews. Guidance pours through me in a state of light meditation through the images on my cards. I serve with humor, and practical intuition on the everyday subjects of the human condition. Join me every Monday at 1 o'clock Eastern. Welcome to the Calling of Light. Welcome to the Calling of Light. In a breathtaking event that joined people around the world together, despite religious doctrine, political party, and lifestyle, the Titan sub joined the historical shipwrecks in history. I like to think that the passengers of the Titan are now joining the passengers of the Titanic, who with open arms are breaking bread with the five people on the Titan sub, all together with a ghostly glorious dining room of chandeliers and crystal dinnerware for the wealthy, prestigious, and ironically doomed, and all sharing their experiences and in braced them to join for dinner in the beautiful Titanic dining room. That is a romantic is how we think. And it brings resolve to the unfairness of the Titan journey. I think of all the women on shore who watch the ocean waiting for their men to come back from the sea. And I'm sure the family members of the Titan felt the same way. As a romantic, I like to think that the passengers of the Titan are now climbing the stairs of the beautiful ghostly Titanic, who with open arms take them to the dining room of beautiful chandeliers and crystal dishware and wine and goblets that were the Titanic's fame. It was said that the passengers, at least three of them, paid an exorbitant amount of money to be able to be on the Titan. Ironically, It was to be the journey to their death. Filmmaker and Titanic expert James Cameron told ABC News that the Titan submersible was likely trying to resurface after losing all communication with the outside world hours into a deep sea mission Sunday, and that the five passengers on board likely knew of a problem before the vessel collapsed in implosion. This Ocean Gate sub had sensors in the inside of the hull to give them a warning when it was starting to crack. And I think if that's your idea of safety, then perhaps you're doing it wrong, says James Cameron. 
they probably had warning that their hole was starting to detonate and starting to crack, he said. And you can only imagine the horrific fear that the five passengers went through. The sub went missing an hour and 45 minutes into the dive, prompting a massive search led by the U.S. Coast Guard that began on Monday. On Thursday, the Coast Guard announced they had found a debris field of pieces of the Titan and that it had imploded during the mission and that the five passengers were all presumed to be dead. Later Thursday, the Wall Street Journal reported that the U.S. Navy implo heard the implosion like sounds on a top secret sonar system Sunday, just hours after the sub lost communication with the mothership. It took until Thursday to deploy the proper ROVs to the scene to confirm that the sound was consistent with the Titan debris. And though it remains unclear whether the vessel even made it to its desired end point, the Titanic wreck, and when exactly in its journey, it imploded. Again, the five people in the Titan sub, each were celebrities in their own right. The passengers aboard the submersible each paid $250,000 for the experience of diving into the Titanic. It is tragic. It brought the world together for a brief moment in time. And it was like watching the Titanic happen all over again, only this time in current history. But I can't help but think that in their quest to achieve their dream of exploring the Titanic, that indeed, that may be where their spirit energy roams. I would like today to give brief readings on the ship and on the five people that were in it. The first person I will read is Stockton Rush, the CEO of Ocean Gate Expeditions. When I channel through tarot, and I have done it for many people whom I do not know the names I am reading on, I am doing this also with the five passengers. Stockton Rush. Confusion. Where am I and how did this happen? I belong with my family on Earth. This is so totally out of control. How could anything so strategized, so planned, come out so disastrous. And what about the people I love? How can I ever apologize to them now? I love you all and know that in my own way, and in my own perhaps selfish desire for drama, I take full responsibility. I never wanted to become a victim or make anyone else a victim of my decision. 
I love the people I am with. I love my family. But know that here, there is no material way to be able to solve the riddle of what it lies ahead of me. I can't change this. I can't redo this. I can't believe it. And that is what comes up for Stockman Rush. Now, British billionaire Hamash. Please know I apologize for not saying their names correctly. You know what I'm talking about. You know Hamash, who is the British billionaire and owner of Action Aviation. I have reached my ultimate adventure. I am happy. I am with people that I lost a long time ago, even before my birth. When I look back and see who I was, how it became all about money, all about material priorities. I see there was no true romance in that. I see that where I'm at, to even speak of those things, seems like the lost world. I do not like being the victim of circumstances. I am a man of action. I have always wanted to be able to do, spend the right amount of money, achieve, achieve. But the boundaries here wouldn't even consider that. And now, I am open to a new mystery, and it is up to me to let go, and that's not easy. And that's what I get on British billionaire Amesh. Now for the French diver, Paul Henry. And looking at Paul Henry. I will get through this. I can do this. Somehow, I need to get back to my family. But you know what? I'm experiencing joys here I never imagined. I think I was a happy man. I never gave my time to foolish depression, or at least I never allowed my time to process it. I hope that the woman of my life can forgive me. I hope that the people that love me and my family, my, my dear family, will not think badly of me for my foolishness. I regret that I've made a mistake that I cannot get out of. I regret the grief that I've brought to my loved ones. But I don't have time to think about all that. 
I have to think about what it is that I need to be to to become. And now my journey is as the philosopher, the loner, a person of wisdom, much wisdom did I learn. Prominent Pakistani businessman, Shanzada Dawood, is who I would like to look at now. Again, I am channeling through Tarot. That's the way that I mediumship. And each reading is on the energy and frequencies that surface from a name. Prominent Pakistani businessman, businessman Shanzada Dawood. I'm not a star now. I'm not anything. I got what I deserved. The punishment for too much adventure is the outcome of what I am, nothing. I was trapped, trapped in too many things that I had going for me, trapped in all kinds of busy work, trapped in promises I made that I knew I shouldn't have made. Physically, it took a toll on me and my relationships and my beautiful son, who now has to look at existence in a whole different way than I ever expected for him. I never wanted this to be a bad memory for him. I never wanted him to become disillusioned with me. I know that my loved ones are disappointed. Disappointed, not only that I made this decision, but they never got to say goodbye. And the beauty of it is I'm with family that I haven't been with since a child and beyond my birth. They're with me. And now for his son, Solomon, looking at Solomon, my mother, my strong mother, I reach out to you. My father, my strong father, this isn't death, is it? So much chaos, so much action and, and, and stress and fear, so much stupidity. So much words and actions that didn't make sense. And then it was all of a sudden as if we were together, but not on earth, not in a way that we ever thought possible. 
we never meant for it to go this way. I, I never meant to be unhappy. I still bond with my father. I still love. I still see my father as powerful. But the romance is gone. I see my priorities in a different way. And I reach out to my mother, my father, who I am with. And I want everyone to know that I'm not happy. But at the same time, I have to adjust. I'm okay. I'm okay. Quick reading on, did they, under, did they know on the impact of implosion? Were they aware of their death? as it happened. Absolutely not. As victims of the heartbreaking implosion, there was no crisis at that moment. It was just gone. There was no pain. There was no conscious consciousness of their moment of death. Was there knowledge that the ship had problems when it went down? Was it being kept a secret? Yes, and ironically, it said the two people that knew about it most were the, either a sister or mother and perhaps a female co-partner. But they were the only ones that he let this on, his worry. What does it all mean? What does it all mean? When we build our expectations to phenomenal heights and then in an instant lose it all, what does it mean? It means that, and this sounds strange, it means nothing. It means that you live your life, you reach your dreams, and if you die, you die. There is no right or wrong of living your dream. If you fall, then you grow and you pay the price with wisdom. And if you succeed, then you relish in the fame and fortune of it or the joy of it. And I know this is contradictory to what we've all been taught, but it says there is no judgment on the end. You simply go into a state of spiritual entity, and you may ponder and think about the things you have done, but when I look at what does it all mean, sadly, it says it means nothing. It means each of us has a time in our life where we reached for a dream. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. There's no blame at the end of your life. There is no judgment at the end of your life. You are the judgment of your personal journey. And this is what comes through in today's reading.
And I'll be right back with fun readings with two cats in a pet communication reading with Mr. Wiggles and Elvira. We will have a reading with an artist and a river monk as they search for stones by the river. We will read for a woman that is on her way to London and in her reading, truly going to be meeting her past life, which she has experienced there before. Stay tuned and I'll see you soon. Ohm Times TV. Hi, my name is Anne Marie O'Dell, and thank you for inviting me in for tarot and coffee. I offer 37 plus years of accurate, honest tarot channeling. The earth comes through me as a feeling, an inner knowing. I call it the angel frequency. As you say your first name, I close my eyes and shuffle my well worn card as I go into a deep calm. My phone, Skype, or Zoom. Contact me at the calling of light.com. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a, a mile, mile in my shoes. shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome to the Calling of Light. We will have a reading with two cats. Elvira, and Mr. Wiggles. We will have a reading with an artist and a river monk as they search for stones by the river. We will read for a woman that is on her way to London and in her reading, truly going to be meeting her past life. So tell me about the uh, little one we're reading on today. Okay. So her name is Elvira. Um, my husband. Brought <laughs> That's home. appropriate for a black cat. Yeah. She'll She's like, what the heck? Oh, look at those eyes. So pretty. Hello, Elvira. She's All right. Little princess of the dark. Princess yeah. of the dark. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, my husband brought her home. She rode home, like, must have rode home under his truck. Um, coldest night of the year, two years ago. Uh, I think it was New I Year's if Eve. she got run over. Is that why she had a broken pelvis? Or? We're not entirely sure. Um, he brought her home, and I noticed she was kind of walking funny, so we got her to the vet right away as soon as we could. And, um, yeah, they took x-rays. Her pelvis was broken in a couple different places. So, wow. but, she, but as a kitten, how did they put that in a cast or something or what they do? We uh, had the x-ray sent off and they uh, consulted with surgeons because we were maybe going to have it surgically repaired, but she was too little. So we just had yeah. her on cage rest and yeah. 
she basically healed herself just on cane rest. It was kind of a miracle baby. Well, I think like they said with babies, they aren't really bones yet. They're just cartilage. Yeah. So I think when babies fall out of apartment, apartments 20 stories high and fall and they go, they didn't even break their bones or they, or they, yeah. you know, are still alive. And I think yeah. it's just that they bounce. I think they're, they're just still so soft boned that they're already prepared for horrific accidents. Yeah. She healed really nice. And so you wouldn't even know that she had that happen. Wow. Well, so we can do both cats. The other one is who? Uh, the other one is Mr. Wiggles. Um, he was <laughs> Mr. Wiggles. Yeah, he was my first bottle baby. Um, he, uh, the neighbors were well. There was some renovations going on next door uh, in preparation to sell that house, and the renovators found this two-week-old kitten that its mm -hmm. mom had left it, and um, it had its eyes open, and that was about it. So. Wow. Raised him up and yeah, about a year ago he started having urine urinary issues and so he had blockages. He's had a couple blockages. And so he's just very stressy lately. And thank you. So here's what comes up on Elvira's energy at this time. Isn't she the queen? Um it says at one time, she didn't trust anybody. But since then, she's developed tremendous self-confidence. So much so that she can read everybody and everything around her like a book. She's also a bit of a visionary. She's kind of psychic. Mm -hmm. So she reads you like a book. And it shows, most of all, she's very, very grateful that you are in her life. Mm -hmm. Are you her favorite? Yes. I, yeah, that's what I figured. She would tell you that she really likes it when you're a team because she doesn't like it when you think you're the boss. She just wants you to know that you're both equal. Mm -hmm. She also says she can't help it, but she feels like she has to protect you. Oh. And she has to protect the home. So mm -hmm. she's kind of um, hired herself to be a watch cat. Oh. She, she gets kind of confused sometimes. Um, it says she can be moody and temperamental. Mm -hmm. And it says, but she thanks you so much for the beautiful family that she's in. But she wishes you would be more patient. Oh. For some reason, she's been sensing that lately you've been nervous or you've been impatient. And because she channels you and it has a telepathic connection with you, if you want to know how you're coming off, look at Elvira. Okay. Because you may very well find out that Elvira, it feels like she has to take care of you right now because mm -hmm. for whatever reason, she feels you're going through stress. Elvira also feels that you need to realize that it's okay if you give her complete control. She'll be just fine with that. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wants you to know that she really doesn't want you to have any more cats. Okay. <laughs> and she feels that, that sometimes, and, and please forgive me, I'm, I just tell you what comes through. She's right. been upset with your husband. Mm -hmm. She doesn't feel like he's been as warm and as caring lately. Oh. And Elvira says, you can count on her. She's here for the long haul, and she will do everything she needs to. And if you just want to hand all the control over to her, she'll be more than happy. Um, I don't know how she's going to go around feeding the rest of the felines, but um, 
maybe that's why she's been a little temperamental lately. She seems to be upset with your husband. Okay. Okay. So Mr. Wiggles, he's, oh, he's pretty. He's kind of a peach and, and pale, uh, he's got pale him, gold but... color. All right. So if we look at his energy and just say his name. Mr. Wiggles. Who named him? Me. <laughs> when he was little. And then, <laughs> and then again. Mr. Wiggles. Thank you. So here's Mr. Wiggles' energy. Well, Mr. Wiggles is a whole different kind of personality than Elvira. It shows that, first of all, he's grateful that you are spending so much time and energy with him. And he wants very badly to be more active and motivated and, and be his old self. But he feels like lately he's had to be more generous than he really likes to be. Um, or maybe in a cat talk, that means more, more obliging to the other cats. Mm -hmm. All he knows is that he feels lucky to be where he's at. And he's been having some doubts lately. And I don't know what those doubts are about, but maybe because he's not feeling good, he has doubts about his position in the pride, in the, in the hierarchy of the cat family. And lastly, it says, and, and I'm trying to figure this one out, Stop committing and being so responsible for him. He just wants you to know that sometimes you could just chill out a little bit and not be so attentive. Okay. Because it makes him feel less manly. Okay. It makes him feel like he's lost his mojo. Okay, say your first name. Charlotte. All right. And again. Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, in the past three weeks, um, I'm not sure why, but it says that you went through kind of time where you felt like people weren't being very generous or you felt like not being generous with them. And it says that during that time, you were kind of on taking my bitch pill mode <laughs> where you just felt like, you know, if you're into what's going on, great. If you're not, so be it. But the nice thing is July and August. July is seen as an amazing opportunity being open for you with august it says magnetic results so okay. if i look at um what comes up excuse me i feel like i'm reaching over the table in front of somebody's face when i did that um say your first name charlotte so the first thing that comes up charlotte says this is your time to stand your ground, to be completely in control of whatever decision you make and whoever is involved in that decision. Your reading says you're on the cusp of a new beginning, which means that if there's ever a time where you may find a new life chapter opening up for you, it could be very quickly. The past, and I don't know why, but it says um, about three weeks, possibly three months ago, it says a broken heart. And I don't know if you had to break somebody else's heart or if somebody broke yours. Your reading shows that also that was the best damn thing you could have ever done or had happen. But, <laughs> but it says expect that there may be 
somebody that has a temper tantrum or somebody that has a get back or somebody that goes ballistic. And I don't know what that's about. Your reading says, actually, this is the time to be proud of your boundaries, to hold your ground, and to remember that if in any way you're in doubt about something, do nothing. In any way, if you feel doubt, then wait until you're more confident about it. Your reading says, um, traditional commitments concerning home, career, family, whatever, seem to be more a priority for you in the coming um, weeks. There seems to be a strong emphasis that you are going to be doing something that is out of the norm for you, because I know you're the artist, you're the person that's the free spirit, but I also feel that right now you're going into a, I'm going to say more conventional or more um, maybe the predictable conventional side of Charlotte. And lastly, it says, you are the person that everybody's going to be. That's one dirty dog behind you. <laughs> <laughs> You are the per <laughs> you are the person that's going to be expected to fix everything. You are going to be the problem solver. But understand this. Whatever happened in the past three weeks to three months that either you had to give bad news to somebody else or they gave to you, the thing is, it was for the best. And it and don't don't doubt it for a second. Okay. You get one free question. Um, that thing that has happened in the past, like three weeks or whatever, is that going to get any better? And if I look at that, Charlotte, it says it is not going to get worse. Okay. But what I can tell you is that it just kind of goes into limbo. Stand your ground. Whatever happened was the best thing you could have ever done. Hey, how's it going? If you want to be in the river. Hi, Josh. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I just pulled this out of the river. It's kind of ironic. Wildlife management area. And, it, and it's Public in the river. Hunting. Yep. All right, how's this? Sounds looks real good. Looks very riverish. <laughs> yes. All right, Jeff, say your first name. Human. And again. Human. <laughs> it says this is a time that you are incredibly honest. That you do what you say you're going to do that you are very believable, that you are very focused, and that your attitude is in a very good place. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you got the jackpot. All right, so let's look at what comes up in your more detailed reading and say your first name again. Human. And again. Human. And I just want to make sure you are saying human, right? Yep, H-U-M-A-N. <laughs> okay. The first thing that comes up, okay. The first thing that comes up is um, king of kindness and love. Interestingly, it also shows that you will be seeing a... a connection with either a brother or a good friend who is also seen male. And this seems to be within a month's time. This person seems to be somebody that is on your side. 
just happened, I'm I think. I'm shown spirituality, a spiritual connection. The past shows that you walk the path of love, that you walk the path of compassion. The future says you're ready to dump your commitments and responsibilities to something that has no longer felt good to you. Is that, see, I might be already in the future. <laughs> it also says that it, by nine weeks, you're going to know who your true friends are and who they are not. And that that would make it approximately, we're looking in August. Yeah. The end of August. Yep. Your reading says that right now, the one thing you don't need is anybody trying to hurt you or to put you down. That's a good and one right there. Keep it right there. It also says that at this time, there's a feeling that um, responsibilities to um, very organized uh, families and commitments to career situations seem <laughs> a little amiss right now. But it says are you, you are <laughs> you are refusing, and yet you are ready to become the victim, the patsy, or whatever it takes if it'll make others feel better. Because I lost you. <laughs> Where's Brett? Brett, Brett, come here. Can you say? Huh? I, I, I'll, I'll be the victim or the patsy or whatever to make others feel better. And it okay, says. I'll sit back down. In conclusion, it says, you may not necessarily make everyone happy. But on the other hand, without even knowing it, you're totally in control. And wise people know sometimes there's bullshit you have to stay away from. And I think that your reading is saying that you're at a point either in career or even in your personal life where you know that you're going to be more select about who you get close to. That you were, um, that right now, it says you're opening up like a flower. Next month is represented by magnetism. So there seems to be something pretty amazing going on in your energy in July. And in August, it says you're very, very receptive. You're like a magnet for all kinds of really cool things that are going to start to happen for you as the year goes on. So that's where your energy is at. If I look at what comes up in more in depth, that it seems like all the dominoes are in line. Everything's about commitments to home and family right now. And your reading says that in the recent past, you were moving on from some kind of sadness, and I don't know what that is about, but it says you were deciding to either, and this could have been why you stopped communicating with some people, it may be interrelated, but it says you, you decided that you had to move on from a disappointing conclusion or situation related to home or career that you didn't feel um, would ever happen. I don't know what it is, but it just says that it, you've, you've moved on from that. You healed from that and it took a lot of healing and maybe it was just your physical or maybe it was just letting go of the mentality that is hard to shed. It's like anorexic people that look in the mirror, but they still see themselves, their old weight. Mm -hmm. And that maybe it has something to do with letting go 
of an old image. And it says that um, there are certain things in your life that you're still not quite satisfied that you are doing exactly what you want to be doing. And it says it's part of the um, transformation of your energies and your focus for the future and what is coming that's going to resonate with the fact you're not quite completely happy with what you're doing. You're not asking anymore to have an environment that resonates with a beauty that would make up for a beauty that you felt you missed out on. You are the beauty. And so the environment doesn't have to make up for or help represent you. The environment is held up by your beauty. And so whatever you choose is going to be of a helping, healing, and ability to transform others and your own environment to because of your um, natural healing abilities. It could also be anything that has to do with nurturing. Expect this year and the next 12 months to be one of balance, healing, higher vibration, the ability to manifest everything that you need and want to you because you are starting to vibrate at a higher frequency. And I think that you're going to notice that it starts to take on a new dynamic in your life where you no longer, your environment is important and it needs to be beautiful, but it no longer has to represent you. You represent mm -hmm. yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. And so um, you have one free question. Well, we are we're going on vacation starting tomorrow. So maybe just like a read on, on vacation for a week. Where are you going? London. That will match your vibrating frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> and if I look at that, it says... It seems to match your attitude. It feels like you're going to go there and go, oh, I think I'm supposed to live here. <laughs> it's going to be a very magnetic vacation. I think it's going to match all of that high, high frequency vibration. Everywhere you walk and go seems to be like you've been there before, as if you're visiting a past life. And you're going to feel unusually secure there, as if for whatever reason, I've been here before. And lastly, it says, it's going to take patience because you may have to hold yourself back like a horse with good reins on, because you're going to want to recapture and do all the things that you have been planning and wanting to do, but perhaps trying to recapture some past life connection that you're, that you've got the scent of like a bloodhound on a, on a, on some kind of old piece of fabric that's looking for a criminal. You're looking for, you're looking for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think London's going to be like for you. <laughs>